So going a bit deeper into my fingering board journey, why don't we use it as a, a way to visualize the patterns found in two and three octave scales. Let's start with a two octave A major scale, starting with the first finger on the G string. By starting the second octave with the eighth degree of the first octave, it now becomes the first degree of the second octave. From there, we build using the same patterns. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, with, of course, a, a whole step between the tetrachords. And with that, we now have a two octave scale. Notice that the configuration of whole and half steps from string to string, starting from the G string, is whole, whole, half on the G and D strings, and whole, half, whole on the A and E strings. This pattern will stay the same for all two octave scales that start with the first finger on the G string. For example, if you look at B major, starting of course with the first finger on the G string, you will see that the distribution of tetrachord patterns are identical. Whole, whole half, whole, whole half, whole half, whole, whole half, whole. Patterns. I love it. All right then, so let's move on to the three octave scales. There are four major fingerings for major and minor scales, at least in my book. Here, look at this chart. Why don't we look at B-flat ascending on my fingering board? This will allow us to see patterns that emerge from string to string and within positions. On the G string, it starts with two, one, two, three, four. I call this a two, one, two fingering. This fingering starts with B flat major and can be used for any scale above it, like C, D, E, etc. So on the G string, the two, one, two, three, four pattern is half, whole, whole. On the D string, it's Ho, ho, ho. On the A string, it's ho, ho, then shift to the E flat and it's ho, ho, ho. Then on the E string with one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, it's ho, half, ho, ho, half, with a whole step shift between them. Oh, yes, for the record. Descending on the E string is 4, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. On the A and D and G strings, the fingering stays the same as in the ascending scale. At the end, it becomes 2, 1, 3, 2. Okay, that said, let's look at B major. First, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, it's the same. The D string fingering pattern, it's the same. In fact, it's all the same. Every string pattern, every shift, the same. Another fingering, however, is used for an A major scale. I call it a 2 1 1 fingering. So that becomes 2 1 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 1 2 3 4 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 4. Do be aware, however, that these fingers work only when you start from the G string. As I showed you in the scale chart, there are two scale fingerings left for an open G and another for A flat, which are unique to those keys. G, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. A flat. One zero one two three four one two three four one two one two three four one two one two one two three four. 
by the way, an added bonus is that all these fingerings work for all minor skills as well. Perhaps you are wondering why I organize these fingerings this way. I mean, some would say that all fingerings are useful and should be learned. And I guess, well, for me, it just boils down to the fact that I feel that one needs to start somewhere that's clear and as organized as possible. And from that point, I think one has all the tools one needs to explore. So with that, do take care. And again, please, please be safe. Thank you.